Today on Progeny YouTube, we're going to talk about a piece of the fertility and family building puzzle that often goes overlooked. Yes, we're talking about male infertility, but what we're really talking about today is reproductive urology. First, I want to ask that if you need this kind of information, or if you just want to support this kind of physician-backed content on the internet, then subscribe to our channel, maybe hit a like button, and share this content with anyone who you think might need it. Doing those things really helps YouTube understand that these are videos that people need to see. And I should probably introduce myself. I'm Dan Bolger. I produce and host the Fertility and Wellness Podcast. This is Infertility for a company called Progeny. Um, today I'm wearing a shirt with palm trees on it by mistake because I forgot we were recording today. But ignore my casual shirt and listen to my serious words. When people talk about fertility specialists and finding their fertility doctor, they're usually talking about reproductive endocrinologists or REIs. REIs are female fertility specialists. And yes, they are the ones that would perform things like IUI and IVF, but for many people, a reproductive urologist could be critical in finding success. So today, Dr. Joseph Alukal, a reproductive urologist from Columbia University Irving Medical Center, is gonna help us better understand his role in all of this. Now we're here talking about reproductive urology, not because it's an incredibly sexy topic, but because it's an incredibly important field of medicine. And it's an incredibly important field of medicine because male infertility is actually significantly more common than most people think. Of the one in six couples that attempt family building who are going to have difficulty getting pregnant, uh, it's 50% of them that will have an identifiable male factor. A quarter where it's male factor infertility alone that's causing the couple to have this issue. And then another quarter, another 25% where both the, the male partner and the female partner have some sort of issue that's identifiable. If you have some experience working with a reproductive endocrinologist, then you might be familiar with the Andrology Lab. The Andrology Lab is where they perform the semen analysis and they check the sperm for motility, morphology, and get the sperm count. So you might be wondering, if a reproductive endocrinologist can do a sperm test, then what can a reproductive urologist really bring to the table? And the answer is, well, a lot. The difference between just having a semen analysis performed in, say, the andrology laboratory at a fertility center and getting evaluated by a urologist by, like myself is the opportunity to, for example, perform a physical examination of the patient, take a medical history that might help you to understand what's going on in terms of medical explanations for the patient's problem potentially. Uh, an andrology laboratory is typically only going to be able to perform semen analysis testing. And while semen analysis testing is important, helps us to know sort of where does the patient stand with regard to this particular problem in terms of its fertility potential, it's not the be all and end all. And I would encourage the man who's thinking about getting this sort of evaluation, look, I know it's embarrassing, I know it's, it's time consuming, you gotta get yourself in to see someone like myself, but at the same time, it's important. It's important for your own health and it's important in terms of achieving your goal as a couple. So let's get into the details here. When someone's ready for reproductive urology, the first step is the initial evaluation. And yes, guys, this might not be the most comfortable part of the process, but we just need to remember to keep our eyes on the prize. Getting this evaluation might be the key to unlocking future fertility success. It's going to include a thorough history so I need to ask the patient a lot of questions, need to find out about his medical history, his surgical history, medications he might be taking currently, supplements he might be taking currently, his family history. I need to find out about his partner. He needs to tell me how old the person he's trying to have children with, how old is that person, do they have any medical issues that they're aware of, have they been evaluated by a reproductive endocrinologist, and what did that physician find? Uh, I need to do a thorough physical exam of this patient. And so that includes everybody's favorite moment when they're seeing the urologist and they get dropped, asked to drop their pants, turn their head and cough, all of that fun stuff. I want people to be prepared for it though. Uh, it's just a few embarrassing moments, but it gives us an awful lot of information that we need. Uh, in all likelihood, we're going to order some laboratory testing as well. Uh, usually that includes blood work to check hormone levels in the patient. Uh, and so when we get to the end of that, uh, if we've presuming we've already got a semen analysis on the patient, I can say to somebody, look, you've, you've got a thorough evaluation now. If I have these hormonal tests, if I have that semen analysis result, if I know about your medical history and I had the opportunity to examine you, there may be some other testing that gets done depending upon what data I'm looking at already. Uh, that could include things such as 
a Doppler ultrasound of the scrotum, so an ultrasound evaluation of the testicles and the surrounding structures. It could include some genetic testing, uh, oftentimes drawn via more blood work. Uh, it could include more sperm testing, including things like a DNA fragmentation assay of the sperm. The reproductive urologist and the reproductive endocrinologist should be working closely. We need to remain in contact regarding the overall uh, situation that any particular couple finds themselves in. I'm oftentimes explaining to patients that there are not concrete recommendations I'm going to make to a man of a certain age and with a certain condition. I might suggest to a couple something very different if that patient's female partner is, say, older or younger or has different medical issues. And so for me to have that complete picture, I need to be working with that female partner's doctor. And so in this day and age, it's easy to, to pick up the phone, it's easy to send an email and to get some answers to where do you think this couple stands. And so we're constantly navigating that process with different IVF centers and different reproductive endocrinologists to make sure that we're providing the best care to our patients, but more importantly, to each individual couple. And that's what we have for you today on Progeny YouTube, but don't worry, there's a lot more coming. We post videos every Tuesday featuring fertility experts from around the country. In the future, we'll talk more about male infertility, female infertility. We'll speak with more reproductive endocrinologists and reproductive urologists to try to help you answer all of your questions. So again, subscribe, like some videos, spread the word. We would really appreciate it.